Hello and welcome to another Anim Dojo podcast. Uh, what is Anim Dojo? We're an online platform and our mission is to give everyone a helping step up the career ladder in the animation and VFX industries, regardless of your age, location, wealth or time availability. And we do that on our website, what we call an animation gym, having lots of workouts, live streams, challenges, feedback sessions, you get the idea. Um, all trying to help you do the kind of the job you, you want to do and hit the ground running. Uh, my name is Tom Box, co-founder of Anim Dojo, and here's the brilliant Anim Dojo team. We have uh, Katie. Hi, uh, I'm community manager at Anim Dojo, and I'm a recruiter at Blue Zoo Animation Studio. And we have Grace. Hello, I'm the marketing coordinator for Anim Dojo and Blue Zoo. And last but not least, we have Bader. Hi, I'm Bader. I'm co-founder of Anim Dojo and animation supervisor at Access. Excellent. Well, cheers for everyone for coming along. But also we have uh, two guests and that's because we're continuing our series of podcasts on looking into what particular animation job titles are. Uh, so far, we've done one. The first one was on um, character design and the one after that was art direction. Uh, so look into those if you're intrigued or want to know more about those uh, job roles. Um, but today we have Charlotte and Farhad. Uh, so welcome both. Um, Charlotte, could you say who you are? Hi. Uh, yep, I'm Charlotte. I am a 2D environment designer, but I previously did a 2D layout. Um, yep, Farhad is my uh, lead. Or was. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> <laughs> and Farhad, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi. Um, so I'm today a layout supervisor at Blue Animation Studio. And so as Charlotte said, I worked with her for one season on Pony. And yeah. Cool. Excellent. So from that, I hope you uh, see the, the, the theme there. We're, today we're talking about 2D layout artists, which is one we've really wanted to talk about because it is one of those roles that a lot of people don't know exist. It's one of the less common roles compared to an animator or, or designer so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to talk to uh, to explain what what the, the role is and get some real uh, conversation of, of what it involves um, so I guess that kind of um, begs the question <laughs> in in terms of for someone who has no idea never heard of what a 2D layout artist Charlotte what would you how would you explain it nice and easily for someone to understand well, when I'm talking to someone who doesn't really know about 2D animation, I would normally reference a common show like The Simpsons or something. And I would say, you look at a background in that and you see the line work. It's essentially that, like drawing the, the structures, the perspective, everything that's in it, and then someone else paints it. Okay, so it's a bit like kind of doing the, the black and white uh, line art picture yeah. For someone else to colour in that's the back that's the background of Farad, would you would you have anything to add to that in terms of what, what it is? Yeah, uh, basically she, she said we are doing the background, but also we can have to hit some other stuff like uh, composition uh, in the image, um, the characters out to put them in the in the environment, checking also all the design, if the design is matching, etc. So all the little details that um, could improve the image, the final image uh, on screen. Yeah. Okay, cool. So it's it sounds like it's uh, from what I've seen of it, it looks like it's kind of a, a mixture of uh, storytelling, draftsmanship, and cinematography all kind of rolled into yeah. one. Would you say that's the the mixture yeah. of skills that it is, or is there is there other things that that you that are important or vital to it as well? Yeah, I, I will. I will let Charlotte start. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm polite. <laughs> I, I think that I think that pretty much covers it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, sorry I interrupted you. Um, so uh, I was about just to add. Uh, yeah. Uh, in fact, we have also to check some st storytelling aspects um, in the layout. So the fact that, for example, a character when he's moving in in, in the scene, we have to explain kind of with elements around what is important in the scene, also playing with the, the lighting, uh, for highlighting a zone, a particular element, uh, I don't know, a window when you have to go, the character have to go to the window, this kind of element. So we have to do 
actually a lot of things, but uh, yeah, people don't know it. So, so what, what kind of stage in the production process does the 2D layout role um, take place in? I'd say it's, it's fairly early. Um, yeah, because we, we come quite a bit before animation. It kind of, um, we, we kind of take the storyboards, what they've done, and we take what the environment designers have done. And we kind of, um, <clears throat> yeah, put together the layouts and then that's passed on to the people who paint the backgrounds and I guess simultaneously they're given to the uh, animators. So oh, okay. yeah, just before animation. So do you have to, so it, to get it right in my head then, are you given a, so it's, it's different from back environment design. So if you're given a design from the environment designer, do you then have to kind of work out how to draw it from different angles, depending on what the shot is? Yeah, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's how it works. Um, sometimes we'll be get, get given uh, one wide shot that the designers have drawn and they've kind of put everything where it's supposed to be. And then we would say do like two or three different angles for what the storyboard is need. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> If I may add uh, just a little thing in it. So it's also like when we see, uh, when we have to do the layout, we'll have to also to set up the camera uh, movement in it. Also split the image, uh, all the layers. For example, what's an overlay? So what's coming in front of the character? What's behind the character? So all these things we have to set up them because when the work is going to the background team, they will also split the same way the background. And then it's going to the comp team and the comp team is doing the same. So they need all this information coming from the layout and they have to go out on the top of the, the pyramid. Kind of. So it's, it sounds like a, quite an a, a important job then that the rest of the, the, the production yeah, really kind of relies on. Yeah, a lot of things depends the way that we are set up in our uh, files and our pieces because if we mess up something, so you're gonna roll to the other, and so it's gonna make it bigger and bigger. So the problem can be huge if we do a mistake. So we better be very careful uh, on, on our work. And so it's yeah. a, it sounds like difficult. It's, it's not really difficult when we know what to do, but at the beginning, mm -hmm. there's a lot of knowledge to uh, digest, and then uh, it can be quite interesting to do all these steps. Yeah. Can I have a question? Um, so it sounds like you guys have a really good sense of perspective and um, I'm guessing maybe how big things are, scale, um, and to me that sounds quite daunting, like I would, I would be really afraid of having to learn those skills. How did you guys go about learning um, how you can kind of um, figure out the dimension of a room or um how big something is in relation to something else like how what where did you find those skills let charlotte start <laughs> <laughs> um well i guess uh yeah cause i i finished university um a couple of years ago i believe it was my first job um so i i guess from the university experience uh, a lot of people didn't care for layout at all. Um, they didn't find it interesting. They found it a bit tedious. You know, it's, it's not like a lot of people don't find it very fun trying to figure out the technicalities of like, uh, you know, what does this shape look like at this angle, blah, blah, blah. It's very disciplined, um, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's quite clean. Uh, at least that's how we do it here. Uh, we do it quite clean. Um, so some people they they just don't enjoy that. I was always the person that enjoyed doing the uh, the hand line art for the animation, like doing it on the paper, like the um, the clean up exercises. So a lot of people just don't have the patience for that. But I think um, if you do, then yeah, you can kind of over time when you do more and more, you your eye is just trained naturally to figure out what looks right and what looks wrong you get a yeah. sense of that looks a bit wonky that, yeah. that doesn't look right <laughs> so what um practice. did you say it's it's kind of practice then you're saying like yeah, yeah. You, you really gain that sense of sense yeah of i'd say so i mean i think i i look back at some stuff that i did when i started here 
and it's it's just amazing how much my skills have improved over that time so yeah yeah i wanted to pick up on that point yeah. sorry if it was interrupting so um <laughs> i want to pick up that point in terms of saying some people might not might not like it but you really do what what type of person would you think it appeals to what do you think it is about you that or what what of that kind of role on that being quite disciplined and or kind of technical what kind of person does that appeal to you then um so to, to be honest uh, we, when you start the layout it's good to be very patient as well um so it's not a rush work uh, you don't have to to rush it too much because it, it will impact so many other stuff after that um so basically the best profile is someone who like uh, uh, and who enjoy uh, telling a story while he's drawing a background kind of, if I may say. So uh, it, it also I need to understand that it's not just about drawing. Um, so it, it will be also uh, be a lot of checking elements. Um, for example, you said uh, uh, how we figure out the scale uh, in the characters uh, in a background, etc. So that come also because for example, in the previous package, so the design, the character design artist always use an element to compare the size of a character. For example, you put it near to a chair or a door. So we know that, okay, that chair uh, and this character have this size. So when you implement them in the background, we'll build around this all the rest of the background. So that will be our key element. Um, so we will have to be kind of not real architects, but we we'll have to enjoy uh, creating and building an environment that looks logical for this show. Because in another show, the character may be very small an element very big so we'll have to take this in mind always and 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 so yeah pretty much very be, being very patient and enjoying uh, not only drawing but all the stuff that goes around with the layout so that's yeah. the, the best profile i wanted What's to say um when because um, i remember the first time i heard about 2d layout uh i was browsing uh sort of like uh studios that had their productions uh, transparent they show you the different stages that they have and I remember there was stuff from like Nickelodeon they had like a different like they show you the storyboards and then there was there was one particular episode where they shared the layout and it was the first time I saw it and I thought to myself what that looks like key poses that look th those look like animation key poses yeah and I was confused because I thought those were set by the animators and then I remember uh, I had a friend who used to be a, uh, a 2D animator at Disney a long time ago, and he told me, no, they, 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 and he explained it to me very crudely. He just said, oh, they, they use the 2D layout to also check if the action that's planned is going to fit yeah. in the shot. Yeah. Sometimes the, the storyboard says they do this, but then you actually come to animate it, it doesn't fit. Yep. And you need to make sure that the action fits. So that's why they put the key poses. Mm. And I was like, oh, but then how does it? He's like, yeah, 2D layout is different to storyboarding. And, he, and that's when it opened my eyes. Yeah. Um, and I think, uh, well, the question I'm asking then, I guess, is like, what, what would happen if there's no 2D layout on a certain show? Like, what is the thing that will become the problem? Because I think one of them would be you will be wasting lots of resources. Mm. So the thing is, if... Uh, so... I, at the beginning, there was always a layout uh, when they start animation. So that was a key point. But to w when they start to produce things in Asia, um, they try to think more economical. So what they did is to push a bit more the storyboard and to try to give them a better storyboard uh, with more clear keyframes, etc. But it's still not enough. So that's why you end up with a lot of uh, show produced in Asia with a lot of scale character problems. So they look weird and the background looks a bit weird because the characters are not fitting so in it. At that stage completely. Yeah, exactly. So that's why a lot of show looks very bad on screen. And the difference when you have a layout team, so you can see clearly the difference. You have a quality, jump quality in, in your show because some people are, are taking care of that. Uh, if you don't take care of that, yeah, you, you will end up with a lot of issues. And the other thing is, uh, so I used to work for Ankama Animation and there we had um, two type of layout. So we had the layout uh, posing. So that was for the characters. And we called it Genga. So that's a Japanese word for that. And we had the layout background. 
So the layout posing was done by uh, traditional animators uh, who used to uh, work on our layout background. But before that, it was the same person who was used to doing the characters and the background. And the problem with that is like you cannot have a very good, um, you, you can have a very good person doing a very good uh, background, but it's very hard to have a, a person who is doing also very good uh, character uh, animation or character posing at the same time. So that was splitted. Now we have two that kind of department when you have a bigger budget. So they split it in two. So you have the layout background, then you have the layout posing. And then the layout posing is used by the animators to do uh, animation on the on these keyframes because they are keyframes actually. So they have to use those those actual drawings. Yeah. Right? And they can't change it. No, they have to start with that as base and then they can do all the uh, in betweening um, for so the what's final. The layout? So the layout posing was done by someone who would be considered like a lead animator or an animation supervisor or something? Yeah, I mean, for example, in France, it was uh, all the traditional animation people. We had some people coming working with us from uh, Ghibli who, oh. who were doing all these key, f key frames uh, for before that it goes to the Flash animators team. So it's a bit the same uh, with us in, uh, at Bluzu, except we just don't have the Genga. We have straight away uh, the layout background with the we just cut up the um, character uh, in the storyboard and we check the scale and we give them that but we don't don't really redraw them uh, as they should be in a keyframe uh, so we miss that stage but that's that's okay because if the storyboard is clear enough they can figure it out in animation but to be honest it's better to have a keyframe uh, done by a, a traditional animators to have a better uh, pose at the beginning when they start the the the, the keyframes. Well, cool. That's, uh, that's I think that's really really helpful kind of way of uh, looking at it. I think. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, I, one one question I had to want to ask actually because I know kind of like um, like my family are all architects and I have friends who are architects and they kind of wanted to go into it because they like drawing kind of buildings and that's one of the things they wanted. But then you find out when you go into something like that, you find actually the drawing mm -hmm. is like five percent of the actual job is mm. what's it like for for your role is it is there a lot of drawing how much is it of kind of like actually kind of pencil on paper drawing versus problem solving versus more of the the admin side if there is an admin side what's what do you say to that go on charlotte <laughs> um <clears throat> i'd say it's pretty evenly split um i mean of course it it depends on uh you know Everybody does things at different speeds. So somebody might take a little bit more time on the actual drawing side of it, but they might be really, really quick with doing the uh, admin -y side of it, doing the camera moves, the scaling and all that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it is, uh, of course it depends on the episode as well. Uh, some episodes will have, you know, crazy new locations and it'll just be all wacky and it'll be a lot more to draw. Um, but other episodes, you know, you've got more existing stuff that you've used from other episodes. Um, so, yeah, it, it depends on how quickly you work. But I'd, I'd say that it's probably like, um, it's it's probably 50-50 at the end of the day, I think, personally. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so it depends on the, the, yeah, as I said, Charlotte, it depends on the people who are working as well, because when we are dividing the work with the, the job, we try to figure out uh, which, uh, which person is good with uh, what. Uh, so, I mean, with quality they have. So we give them uh, kind of, uh, if they are faster with some aspect of the work, we give them more that kind of uh, type of work to go faster in the whole production aspect of it. Um, so also, um, I forgot what I was about to say. I'm lost now. Let me show you. <laughs> Is it percentages? So, uh, sorry? <laughs> Was it the percentages? Of... Yeah, the percentages. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it depends on the, the, the person. But at Blue Zoo for, for Pony, for example, if I take it as an example, we had much more work to do at the beginning. So we had maybe 50-50 at the beginning. But at the end of the production, because we had so many key uh, places already drawn and we could uh, just reuse them, yeah, it, it goes down to to ten or five, ten percent of per episode. It depends on the episodes, but yeah, it goes lower at the end of the production. Yeah, at the 
at the risk of sounding like it's a job interview, <laughs> which I guess is like a home away from home for me. Is a recruiter. <laughs> um, what's, what's your favorite thing about layout? Like Farhad, obviously you've been doing layout um, for, for quite a long time. You're really experienced in it. And Charlotte, that's the first thing that you went into. What, what is it about layout that really appealed to you? Um, I mean, I'm, I think I'm very detail oriented. Mm -hmm. So probably my favorite part of it is actually the, after you've, you've got all your, your roughs out of the way, you've figured out, you know, exactly where everything is, what the sizing is, how big the characters are. Like I, I love doing the clean version of that. Yeah. But I like spending my time like going through and it's kind of therapeutic for me, like doing the clean pass of everything. So that's, that's what I prefer to do. Yeah. And for me, I like the, so I, when I was working uh, full time as a layout artist, because now supervising is a different kind of uh, exercise. Um, so it was the challenges. Uh, I like to ask for um, more complicated kind of background to do because I like to try to figure out a uh, solution for problems. Uh, so when they had some issue with the background, so I was asking for that one because uh, I like to, to find. Um, what's the best approach to, 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 to take as a perspective aspect, for example, if we have to do a more anamorphic uh, type of background, or we have to do a lower angle, or we have to change the, the composition. So I like to, like to experiment something in the BG. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and also all the other aspects uh, combined to this. Uh, it's very interesting when you do one BG in a week, when you have time for, for example, when uh, it's a feature, uh, we, when you have one week to, to do your background. So it, I enjoy to see the final result because it's very um, interesting. Satisfying. To, yeah, <laughs> satisfying, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I guess I just like a, making things harder for yourself as well. <laughs> just have, choose the have, hardest one. <laughs> I have a random like question that's probably like not really relevant to the role itself, but maybe it does. Um, so how did you find yourself in 2D layout? Did you start something else like you did you start as a different role and then did you transition over time or were you always interested in 2d layout did you start in comics like how did it sort of work for you as a path i mean both of you i'll let you go first because you've got okay, more interesting I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah for, for me um i always enjoy to watch uh Jap anime uh, when I was a kid, so I started to watch Dragon Ball and all this stuff, but it was in the 90s, uh, so a long, long time ago. And so I was very interested by drawing all these uh, elements, so I started draw and draw and draw, and, and, and uh, it ends up by uh, doing comics for me. And I was doing conventions, like I was going to Paris and presenting my uh, comic books, etc. And I start and, and, and I, I start to, to ask myself uh, what I want to do professionally to, to live. And for me, one of the solution was to have a, a, a more um, stable job was to go maybe in the animation. And it was close to drawing, but also it was a, a nice professional path to, and also to meet a lot of other people. So I went to Luxembourg because there is a very nice uh, animation school there. And there I tried to do keyframes so animate uh, I, I tried to start by animating stuff and they they, they tried to push me to do animation keyframe but i wasn't satisfied by that because i was looking for something more uh deep and uh, as i said uh, telling a story while i'm drawing I, I think you can do it by animation too but for me it wasn't enough so i end up on the the background and the layout layout at that stage and so i kept that way because I really love when I start to do layout so that's that's a bit the so from, from like back when you were studying you kind of honed in and felt that's what you want to do and yeah yeah oh, I find it that when I was student yeah wow and that's what you've been doing sort of your whole career like yeah layout exactly and you find that it's rewarding in terms of uh, create creativity creatively I know like everyone has days ups and down but like in yeah. general like, do you find it creatively rewarding yeah because it pushed me to do because I used to do also keyframe uh, the, the Genga as well sometimes so it pushed me to see all the aspects of animation in in just one scene so right. I asked to, to work with everything so it was much more rewarding to, to do 
uh, at something else. So that's why I kind of enjoy that because so many things to take in mind, take care of it. And, and, and so that's why I just kept in it. And you cannot get bored for me, at, at least I'm not, uh, I, I will never get bored of doing layout because there is so many things to take care of and there's always a new show and new type of environment to create. And, and so it's always uh, renewed. So yeah, it's, it stays interesting, yeah. How about, how about you, Charlotte? Um, I mean, I, I actually went to university um, thinking because I, I love the, the Leica stop motion. And I, I went to university thinking that I was going to be a stop motion animator. I, uh, I quickly realized that I'm patient, but I'm not that patient. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> this is the next one up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, we, we did a lot of, uh, traditional 2D animation on paper and I, I did enjoy that. Um, but it, it just wasn't quite the right fit for me. And then we did, um, we did one exercise on a 2D layout and I just, I just loved it. And I just carried on doing that kind of going between 2D layout and environment design and yeah and then I came here. <laughs> nice where, what, where did you study? Uh, the Arts University Bournemouth. Okay cool. Yeah. Nice. Good evening. Um, uh, yeah no very good one. Um, so I, I had one question was if someone's like unsure if they say I'm not sure whether I want to kind of go into um, kind of more background concept art or 2D layout because it sounds like there, there's quite a bit of overlap there in terms of skill. What would you what would you say to someone if they asked that question? I I would say uh, try for both, but um, I I think realistically, if we're talking about university leavers, I would say go for layout. Um, simply because I I think that more design is kind of a, I don't, it doesn't, I don't want it to sound bad, but it's going to sound bad. It's almost a step further from layout because you're, you're creating the ideas yourself. So it's typically um, more of a senior role. Yeah. It's a, it's a little bit further and, um, yeah. layout it's, you know, if you've got, if you've got your perspective nailed and you're, you know, you've got all the other qualities that you need, you, you can pretty much, you can do it. Um, I'd say that it, it's probably easier to get into 2D layout than it is to get straight into a concept job. Um, there are always a few people who are insanely talented and they can get straight into it. But yeah, I'd say that layout. There's always really... exceptions to every rule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'd say layout if you were going to go for one. Okay. Um, and Katie, so... sorry, go on. I was just going to add to that. I don't know if that's what you were about to ask, Tom. <laughs> Probably. Um, but I was, <laughs> <Whatever the> question is. <laughs> I was just going to add that, um, because I, I definitely get what you mean, um, Charlotte, with the, um, with the kind of which one is like maybe like not necessarily easier, but I think the difference is that layout isn't quite as competitive yeah, as design is. It's kind of maybe... Um, more my thinking of it so um, design is you know design is great it's a, and it's a very very popular specialism because I think it appeals very broadly um, to people who enjoy drawing and creating something um, and I think what's interesting about this podcast and kind of like you guys sharing your experiences with 2D layout is kind of showing people who might think you know, I'm interested in design because I enjoy animation and I like drawing, but there's actually like so many different diverse specific areas that that drawing skill mm. can go in and so many different hats that like draftsmanship can wear in mm. the industry. Um, but I think it's, it's really interesting because I think design is kind of appealed to a lot of people because design as a word is probably the most generic word that you can think of in any creative industry. But um, 2D layout is obviously incredibly specific, but I think it just kind of, it's just that kind of narrowing down and it's kind of a case of candidates knowing themselves enough to know that 2D layout is the way to it's, go it's for them. Almost, It sounds almost like it's a little bit more on the technical side of, of I guess, so it's similar to kind of like you have concepts, you have character designers, then you have animators drawing those in different poses. So it yeah. sounds like a kind of a, one's doing the kind of the more the, 
the the blank canvas side of it and the other one's actually kind of kind of bringing it to, to life in different ways so it sounds i don't know if that's a similar analogy or or how it works in terms of the designer versus the actual kind of layout role or if i'm just talking rubbish please correct me <laughs> i think they deal with different problems don't they like they they have to they have to address different problems mm. I think in the first one, you're kind of having to deal with, like you said, concepts, ideas, and whether or not this is uh, in character, in style, for the story. Whereas then I think with layout, you're kind of trying to problem solve actual shot by shot, how this will work for, like, for the storyboard. And whether or not this will work, and I guess so I, so, problems, yeah, yeah. Because I always thought that was done more at the storyboard stage in terms of prop solving that that, I think, that I think, scene. I think, I think with storyboards, yeah, definitely that that does happen. But I think it's more of a sketchy version of it. It's like right. you know where people are roughly, but then you're not having to worry about like where they are from like a certain prop exactly, or where right. they are from the door and how they walk in and then how that affects the next shot. And I guess once you go into layout, that becomes more important. And then you start to mm. worry more about like framing and well, he needs to actually do this, but it doesn't fit. We need to then go wider, which means this is how much of this background needs to get drawn. Cause it's all about that in the end, isn't it? It's like the layout helps uh, prioritize what needs to get done. Otherwise, backgrounds will be painting everything mm. to all levels of right. detail. Whereas layout tells them, no, for shot one and two, we're gonna have a close up on the counter and there we can add more detail, but then maybe like the rest of it is all wide. So when they so do it's that- it's kind of the, the next level of detail after storyboarding. So yeah. 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 Right, so you cool. kind, of, kind of have to work with, it's almost like the economy of it. Um, because yeah. the the background painters, uh, they it takes them a long time to do uh, each background sure. because there's just so much in it. Um, so yeah, we have to kind of help them decide yeah. what they actually have to do. And, like, you don't be responsible for waiting, waiting mm -hmm. their time. Yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I had a question actually. It's for 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 Katie because I know Katie you said it's there's it's almost less competition or it's less competitive to compared to kind of an environment designer yet it's weird you said because from what i hear from blue zoo and i know from lupus as well they said it is incredibly hard to find kind of uh 2d layout artists so you think it that that would mean it would kind of be a little bit tougher to get in if they're they're kind of i guess there's a, there's a strange kind of mixture there so i was wondering what why you think it is so hard to find 2d layout artists so it's kind of, it's a combination of both those things. So it's not as competitive because not as many people know about it. Sure. And not as many people necessarily feel like it's the right discipline for them. And then on the other hand of that, you start to go on the other end and there's not necessarily as many people who can do layout, which both of those together right. creates the kind of skills gap. So um you kind of have a lot of people who like 2d layout kind of comes from a very like please farhad and charlotte correct me if i'm wrong um it comes from a very kind of like traditional place in animation um that isn't necessarily as kind of shouted about as animating concept art storyboarding um so there's like the exposure to information i know that a lot of people at university and layout is kind of wrapped into background so people say that they're a student who and they've graduated and they're a background artist where mm. it's a combination of painting and layout mm. and there's also an addition within that is the majority um, would want to go in there and say I'm a background artist but background painting is kind of where my passion is right. so you kind of have like an, a, an additional kind of majority going to painting because again like 2D layout is such a it's a discipline it's yeah. kind of it's patience and it's like attention to detail which doesn't always speak super well to people who are kind of like the creative mind where it's like we you know <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't always hold hand in hand and sometimes it's a complete perfect fit but not always and again it's that extra information of like 
really understanding the role to understand if I'm going to like this. Painting is so much more widely talked about in terms of like rendering, lighting. It's not necessarily as focused on, especially, you know, when I kind of look at art courses online, rendering and painting takes up a lot more time than people discussing and teaching perspective because perspective yeah. is such, it's much more of like a kind of fine new thing to teach it's it's really hard to teach it's not necessarily a an overwhelming technique it's it's exercise practice and patience so i think all of those factors together kind of reflect the skills gap and why it's difficult to to hive that role and hopefully if anyone's listening to this it'll kind of encourage them to to look into it and see if it's for them but to, to pick up on that point you mentioned um, about you've seen people kind of apply for 2D layout roles and they haven't quite been the right person. What, what do you mean by that? What, what, what was wrong with their work in a general example that, that you could see they, they weren't quite the right fit? So it, it, 99 times out of 100, it comes down to perspective. Right. Um, so, so it's purely a technical thing. Yeah, technical most of all. Farhad, I, I think, like, obviously we work together with recruiting um, a lot of the times for layout, but would you agree with that in portfolios, that perspective is kind of the big thing that holds candidates back? Yeah, I, I think they, they don't just don't understand the, the layout role exactly. The problem is, I think, more coming from uh, the school, the teachers, because they are not explaining them what's real, really a layout uh, job uh, as, as, as a professional. So they end up uh, sending uh, their books so uh, right now I'm checking the internship books and that's the main problem so they are, try to give everything together so they don't uh, split for example uh, uh, a layout from a paint uh, or uh, a character design so they give everything for the same for, for, for all the roles they, they, they want to apply and it's yeah. not helpful because we don't know what the, the quality is or how, how good is the artist as a, as a perspective uh, or this kind of uh, things. Uh, so I think they are more co mostly confused because of that. They just don't know because of the, the, the way they are teach the, the, the job, I think. Yeah, I think that access to information is quite, um, is quite uh, narrow yeah. at times. Wonder, it's definitely not layout. taught um, very extensively. I mean, we, we had one assignment in the whole of three years. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I think a lot of people, because um, I mean, perspective. When when you tell someone that they have to learn perspective, it's not like it's not exciting. It's not <laughs> it's not glamorous. It's kind of like oh, but that's not. You want people almost want like the the magic button to press, and it's it's all good, and then you can get to the fun stuff. Um, but yeah, it's really not talked about in universities a lot, which is a shame. Um, because yeah, there's there's just no real understanding of how it actually works and how like deep the skills to be a mm. layout layout artist yeah. goes. Because you know I'm kind of in the dark about it a little bit. You guys are obviously like mentioning like cinematography and staging and the composition around a key pose and leading the eye and all of those are like fantastically creative things alongside the very strict disciplines of perspective. Um, and I think that that's something definitely to kind of like highlight what layout artists mm. can accomplish and, and how much they can kind of contribute. Well, I, think, I think part of the problem, which uh, I don't know, I mean, Farhad, feel free to agree or disagree with me. Part of the problem is I think that uh, ever since like people were interested in learning animation, there's always been an emphasis on CG. And it's always been 3D, 3D, mm. 3D, 3D and um, there is actually very little resource out there for uh, an actual 2D production. You have courses that teach you traditional animation, like, you know, drawing frame by frame, but yeah. the reality is most 2D jobs are not frame by frame. Most of them are puppet animation, which is like mm. using Toon Boom or Flash, and that type of show will have, you know, a digital version of storyboarding, a digital version of layout, a digital version of 2D rigging. And I mean, when I was doing uh, like a, a, a course uh, like, like 10 years ago now, wow, 
<laughs> I, was, I, was, I was working uh, in the Middle East with uh, Cartoon Network. We were developing a course. And uh, it, was, it shocked me how it's, it was, there's no information out there about how to do a rig, how to do layout, how to do storyboarding. And that's still till today. And I think that's part of the, what we're addressing anyway at Anim Dojo. We're doing like mm. courses now, hopefully to address that um with the you know what, what you guys are doing now with layout but yeah. i think that's part of the problem i think it's 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 that not only is there not much awareness but there's also not much information about how to do it and what it what, what, what's involved in it and like a professional 2d yeah. pipeline yeah, yeah i mean like I, if i go on instagram right now and i'll swipe through i'll get like at least 10 people advertising their digital painting course and maybe one or two people advertising their traditional animation course and then yeah but there's absolutely nothing that talks about a actual 2D production. And 2D production is kind of hidden in this like, yeah. you know, uh, mass. It exists and there's professionals <laughs> doing it. How yeah. did they get they there? Ooh, yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> exist until today where exactly. now we have on, uh, as, as you touched on, uh, excited to announce on Anim Dojo, we've got a, a new room that focuses on, on 2D layout which Farhad has spent the last few weeks making amazing videos to explain it all and to kind of set exercises as well. So um, I think that should be released by the time this podcast goes out. So uh, cheers Farhad for doing all that stuff, but really hope it will provide a route. Cause that is, as you both said, it's, it, it can um, you know, create a route into industry that is, that is open at the moment and people aren't necessarily taking advantage of. So I think it's, yeah. that's why I think it's such a, you know, a valuable thing to do. And especially because, um, you know, a lot of studios have said they're, they're itching for 2D layout, 2D layout artists and a lot of people just don't know the role even exists, which is one of the reasons for wanting to do this, this podcast as well. Mm -hmm. I, it made, made me think actually, when you're talking about that, what, what tools do you use to do the job? Um, yeah, we're, we're using mainly f Photoshop uh okay. to do our work uh, but it depends on some production they want us to also set up some time in 3d uh, so we can use sketchup as a 3d tool to help but that's rarely the case because it, it most of directors don't want to use the 3d for the 2d animation because you are kind of limited in the creativity uh, with the the camera angles and the focals and the camera etc so they, they prefer to, to only stay with traditional animation, but yeah, mainly Photoshop for us. Yeah, okay. And um, uh, Charlotte, what, what, what's your setup? Do you use a kind of whack on tablet or a Cintiq? What's your preferred yeah. method of doing the job? Uh, we use uh, the Cintiqs at Blue Zoo, um, but you, you can use whatever. If you, if you have one of the small whack on tablets, that's perfectly fine. I did my 3D, my third year film, uh, just using one of those small little uh, tablets, so you don't need a yeah. a screen to draw on. It's, yeah, or could yeah. you use an iPad and Procreate or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, one one thing we've asked every in each of these uh, this series of podcasts, we've asked if someone sounds like they really want to do this job and they want to get better to avoid some of the uh, mistakes that you might see in portfolios, and they say, "I've got a, a couple of days free." what would you recommend they do in that spare time to, to practice to get better? Just for the, the portfolio or for? Just the general, the general skills. If, if you were kind of back, you know, uh, 18 years old or whatever, and you're thinking, okay, what would you yeah. tell yourself to, to focus and practice on? If you didn't have, even if you didn't have a computer, you just had a, you know, pen and mm -hmm. paper, what, what would you say the best thing to do would be? Uh, for my, my point of view, personally, I will say, to myself, to young Farad, uh, put your focus on the composition and try to understand the continuity. Uh, how to add some elements in your in your in your background, uh, the scale, etc. I mean, all the little details that I was not paying attention at all. So I was just about to put my perspective grid and start working mm -hmm. on that without thinking why should I, where should be my origin line? Where should why should it should be there. Uh, what's the purpose of it? Why should I use all these different kind of uh, um, elements? Uh, building my thing, uh, breaking the symmetry on some background, this kind of thing. So, 
that's the thing I could uh, give an advice to. Yeah. You, is is there a way that you if you found to, a good way to practice that? Whether it's you know copying a comic book or drawing comics or or trying to recreate a frame from a movie. What's is there is there any ways that might help uh, with that? Because obviously composition is a big thing. So uh, yeah. is there a, a, a more uh, kind of uh, example of what what someone could do? So I think uh, they could uh, try to find all the art of uh, f uh, Disney stuff, for example, because you have the books out of uh, Mulan or any of them and try to, 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 to uh, just look at the general uh, aspect of a background, uh, of a layout, because uh, we just see what's on the frame uh, and, and that doesn't show the only background and how it has been composed. Uh, so it's good to see what was thinking the layout artist and all these books are very uh, a great tool just to understand the composition. So one of the best uh, I've ever seen uh, for me is Cusco, um, the Disney one. So the backgrounds are amazing. I mean, the composition are crazy, uh, the design are crazy. So for me, it's the best uh, thing to watch. It's like being a painter, so uh, we have to watch uh, masters, how they, 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 yeah. they work as the same. We have to always try to figure out how they, they, they do the layout they have done. Is that yeah. like that opening shot in Pinocchio? Yeah. You know, the one where they go through and then down and then what? Yeah, and yeah, like... yeah, yeah. So if you, get, if you have the whole picture and not just the framing of the camera, you, you kind of see how they kind of cheat in the, in the layout. So each, each, uh, each, sequence, each uh, segment of the, the background is done for one specific framing. So it doesn't mean the perspective is wrong but is right just for one framing at the moment. So if they want to show the window, they have one uh, specific perspective for the window. And when the camera is going lower, they just cheat and change it because it's working better for the second framing. So sometimes we have to also cheat a lot in, in this. Uh, and it, you're, you're drawing like multiple perspectives within the exactly, yeah. based on yeah. how the camera moves. Exactly. We have to distort things. We have to figure out all this. So that's very interesting to to watch the, the Disney old layouts. Very that good. Sounds yeah. wild. Yeah. Um, and Charlotte, <laughs> what, what, yeah. Charlotte, you oh, go. God, I was, was going to ask you what you, what, what you recommend uh, someone to do. Um, I mean, yeah, I would say, because uh, I've seen a lot of university lever portfolios of second years, um, and a lot of them actually do focus a lot on the, the storytelling side of it. Um, but less so on the actual perspective. And I always, I, I know that it's never the answer that they want to get, <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, I'd always recommend that they just really work on the perspective. If they feel like they've got uh, one point down, then they need to practice their two point. If they've got two point down, it needs to be three point. And then if you want to go crazy, go with like fisheye and all the, all the crazy distorted perspectives but yeah. yeah i think if in doubt go back to basics i guess yeah. would you say it would be worthy to watch the um old animes you were talking about farhad that clearly don't have layout on them yeah, <laughs> watch it think... see what not to do <laughs> yeah we also yeah 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 i think you did you have two schools you have all these uh, features and with all this great content and all this uh, amazing uh, layouts and background. And you have all these uh, small productions done with uh, Asian productions uh, that all this mixed up. And so if you compare both of them, you see what you have to do and you see what you specifically shouldn't do because all the mistakes are in, in one side and in the other side is very great because they have the time to work on it and they have a lot of experience. And the other hand, they don't have specifically the time, but also they don't, they care less kind of, because there's a, so many uh, aspects of the work that they could be boring for them. I don't know, but yeah, better watch both of them and you can figure out what to do and not to do. Yeah. I just, um, I just wanted to touch on, um, I saw recently um, there's a person, uh, her name's Victoria Ying. She used to be a visual development artist at, um, at Disney. And um, I saw that she was talking about an exercise that she found really useful for teaching perspective. Um, I don't know what you guys would think of it, but she said like, 
don't worry about putting this in your portfolio because you're just copying. But if you take mm -hmm. a photo that has a two point perspective or a three point perspective, and then over the top of that, if you draw um, the, the perspective lines and the vanishing point and the horizon line within that over the top of it, and then remove the image and have it next to it. Don't have it underneath it and trace it. But if you have it next to it and then you reference that image when you're trying to draw by following the lines and the guide that you just have, it's a way of kind of try training your eye and like trying to work from within that grid. So you create the grid so that you're like, seeing where those lines are and then you reference the photo to draw it by hand and if you keep reiterating that not putting copied photographs in your portfolio for layout but if mm. you keep copying that it does help develop your eye and i thought that was really interesting to kind of see a very specific exercise because i've not heard of one before sounds sounds like a great exercise for uh, the anim dojo room <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's a very good exercise so it's kind of the thing we are doing actually uh, as a layout artist basically when we draw our grid we uh, bring very low the opacity so we barely see where's the vanishing point yeah and in general what we also do is uh, we we draw a quick sketch uh, first before going crazy on the perspective mm -hmm. see how it works and then we start to build the perspective around it so i mean the the thing is with the perspective um, everyone everyone kind of uh, could have his own methodology uh, it doesn't yeah. mean it's wrong uh, it, it means he, the perspective works a uh, different way for him. Yeah. Uh, he sees things differently. And, and, and so, yeah, I think practicing uh, exercises that way could help you to improve a lot. Uh, yeah. quickly. Mm. Exercises coming soon to Anim Dojo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I think on that note, I think we're, we're out of time. Uh, so thanks uh, to both Charlotte and Farhad for, um, for filling us in on all of that. That's, hopefully will be invaluable to a lot of people. I've certainly learned a lot about what, what the role kind of entails and I hope everyone else did as well. And um, so cheers to you both. And also if you're listening at home, do remember to check out the other um, podcasts we've done previously. Uh, last Was it last year? I can't remember now. Uh, we did loads on kind of the recruiting side of it, of how to prepare uh, portfolios, how to yeah. prepare for interviews, how to do interviews. There's so much uh, amazing, valuable content where we spoke to all different studios to get all the, a range of advice. And then also we've got these different series on uh, a character designer and art director. So do check them out. And then if you fancy giving us a review, that would be even nicer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, and don't forget they're on, uh, if you're listening to this on um, a podcast app, they're also on uh, YouTube as well, where Grace has beautifully kind of made them visual with uh, some of the, um, the references that we're talking about as well. So you can see and our then, faces. Yeah, and you can see our faces. Um, so yeah, so cheers. So thanks again to um, Charlotte and Farhad and cheers to Grace, Beda and Katie for uh, joining in this podcast and hope everyone's enjoyed listening to it. And thanks for listening. So, and don't forget to check the website out with the new room. And uh, until next time, goodbye. Bye, guys. Cheers. Bye. 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 Bye.